So you already have two infamy right now. Okay. And you want to just punch this old woman in the face. You're right. Okay. I Instead, I'm going to uh, grab the baby out of her hands mm -hmm. and then consume it. Oh. I, uh, can you? Yeah. Please. Okay. 32. Okay. You consume the baby. Welcome to Game Gorgon. My name's Indigo. And I'm Krug. And today we're going to be talking about the Pathfinder Society blog post that Paizo did this last week about how XP for the Pathfinder Society is going to be working for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. How many times can I say Pathfinder? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently a bunch. And it's not just XP, it's resources yes. in general. Things that you can accumulate during the course of a session or the course of a campaign or the course of your life until your character dies or vanishes because they're evil, we'll get to that. First of all, <laughs> if you don't know what the Pathfinder Society is, the Pathfinder Society is, see I'm doing it too mm -hmm. now, is an organized play group that Paizo supports mm -hmm. and like creates rules specifically for. As an organized play, you can leave one group, like say if you move, you can just take your legal character from one location and bring it to another because they're all following the same yeah. rules, which is really nice. This isn't an exhaustive list of like how to make a legal no. character for Pathfinder Society. It's just a list of updates for second edition Pathfinder Society, which is coming soon to a wherever the you play games near you. So the first thing that they discussed in the blog post was XP. XP works a little bit differently in Pathfinder Society. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, the monster is a thousand XP and mm -hmm. then you divide it amongst the two players in the session, meaning each of them gets 500 XP. Yeah. It's more of a time-based thing. So each, each individual point of XP is supposed to represent an hour of play. Krug, hold the f on, are you telling me I need to play a thousand hours to reach level two? No, because leveling is 12 XP. Uh -huh. So a quest, for example, is gonna give you one XP, a scenario is gonna give you four XP. There's also a slow advancement option that you mm -hmm. can take. It's basically half value. I mean, I'm just saying 240 hours is still a lot. 240 hours if you're playing normal mode yeah. to go from level one to level 20. Did you head math that this whole time? Yep. Is that <laughs> literally would have taken me longer than when we made that joke until now to come up with that number. Yeah. But then again, I don't think most people go into these things expecting to reach 20. That's my goal. Legitimately quivering palm something and not just start at the level that gives you quivering palm. And then you have to automatically fail to save with the creature that I do it to. Even if it's the big bad boss guy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Now, infamy is the next kind of uh, mechanic. Infamy is a, a scale in which your character can be bad, yes. right? So your character can go out and do evil actions. Yeah, and these aren't like, I'm gonna steal. These are like, murder. I am being a character that's going out of my way to be evil. Yeah. Here's an infamy point. Having one infamy point, isn't the end of the world. It right. makes it more difficult for you to purchase things without it in the world. You can get two infamy points and still exist in the world. If you end a session with three infamy points, it's not like our intro where it's like, I disappeared. Yeah, that was a little hyperbolic. You basically have become too evil to work within the Pathfinder Society. The group basically pushes you yeah. away. I think there could be some really interesting ways as a GM for those to kind of like bring those characters back, yeah. but not as, player characters. It sounds really difficult like to cope with, like, oh, if I get three infamy points, my character's just gone, I can't play that character anymore. Yeah, but they are hard to get. Yes. It's not a simple thing. But they're not permanent. Like, right. You can, in fact, use other mechanics within the system to get rid of infamy points. Yes. So if you start off and you're playing a super evil character, but the group, you know, warms your heart and you realize the error of your ways, you can do good actions and gain fame within the game and be able to use those against your infamy points. Right, and remove them effectively. Exactly. Which is the next thing we're talking about, fame. Fame is- What I am. I'm famous. <laughs> cool, man. It's used to purchase things uh, like services from someone that you just kind of, they need to know you or like know of you. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit more sensitive, like spell casting services, for example. They're also used for reputation 
um, like boons that you can unlock through reputation, which is the next thing we're gonna talk about. Don't tell anyone, spoiler alert. <laughs> reputation, think of World of Warcraft, think of like MMOs where you are working for a group of people, doing quests for a group of people, while well, your reputation with them is going to increase, which allows you to have additional goodies from them. Purchasable stuff, it could be just access to different areas. And the fact that you can work with multiple factions mm -hmm. at a time is really interesting. Do I want a shotgun approach this and get like, like a minimal return from multiple parties, or do I want to hyper focus on one? Dwarven hills are being attacked. Yeah, you're I like, mean, cool. Let's let's focus on reputation. First things first, you're gonna get gold. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's the number one thing. Well, first you're gonna get good, and then you're gonna get gold. Right. Yeah. I'll gotta chase that money. Gotta hate that. Dude, so much. Next, we're gonna talk about achievement points or ACP. It's not AP because that would confuse people. There's already an acronym with AP. Adventure path. They didn't want to use the same acronym as Adventure Path. This is used to balance, uh, a, I guess, a currency that exists already, okay. sort of. There's something called a convention boon or a GM boon, kind of benefits that unlock for people that accomplish certain things within the Pathfinder community as a whole. Okay. So like if you go to a Pathfinder convention and play a game, you could potentially get something special for that. That's kind of been like a sticking point for the community because it's like, oh, well, I don't have a convention near me that I can make it to, or okay. I don't have the money to go and like attend. So it's basically a currency that you're gonna accrue as you play games, just kind of passively. They're gonna be able to be used to unlock the same like GM boons and stuff like that and convention boons that, that people that do those things have access to. Okay. They haven't talked about specifically like how much, how many points are you gonna earn every X amount of time and how much are the things gonna be? Mm -hmm. Like that's nah, still kind of in flux. Okay, okay, okay. But they're trying to address it. Yeah, right? they're basically making this post and saying, look, we understand that this yeah. is an issue. Yeah. We're not ignoring it. Yeah. This is what we think is going to work. That's Which cool is good. to me. Yeah. Next is kind of a, a mechanic to work on the downtime system. Downtime is just basically what your character does when they're not either exploring the world yeah. or directly into combat. Basically when you're not actually at a table playing the game. How, how downtime is going to be working within the Pathfinder Society is that after a single session, uh, depending on how much XP you gain during that session, uh, you have that many days in between your next group meetup yeah. that is going to be in your downtime. So for example, if you played and you got three XP in a single session, you're going to have three downtime days. From that point, it's just using the downtime mechanics in the book. Yeah, one of the reasons I'm glad that they made this a like forced mechanic mm -hmm. versus, because most people don't. Most yeah. people are like, cool, I killed the dragon, now I'm gonna go save the princess, and then I'm gonna kill the ogre king, and then I'm gonna, no, dude, you'd be dead. Physically, emotionally, just be just I think emotionally drained. first. Yeah. <laughs> emotionally way, way sooner. I, I hate saying that it's forced, but it's like, it's trying to make the situation uh, a little bit more relaxed and understandable. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's also part of the game. Like they're gonna make these adventures and they're gonna balance them around the game. And that is a part of the game and it allows you to do things like earn money and stuff like that. So it needs, the option needs to be there in order for the balance to be perfect, right? Because yep. they expect it. Yeah, no, I, I, I like this. I like this a lot. Also, funny, in the blog post they noted uh, that unlike other resources, downtime is uh, one that you cannot stockpile. Like, yeah, duh. Because there's a finite amount of time between the thing that you were doing and the thing that you're gonna do next. That's the thing that we're- Look, you look, can't once I hit that. 20, once I hit 20, I'll take 240 days off. How's that say? Sound? Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of rolling. <laughs> Holy crap. The next one. It's really complicated. Super complicated. It is the most complicated mechanic that they mentioned in the entire post. We're gonna actually dedicate an entire episode on this. Yeah. So we're just gonna dabble into it to let you know. Yeah. And then we'll come back a later episode and go into full. Yeah, deep into, it might be a very long episode. We might have to do a couple. I know it bothers people on YouTube sometimes when you do a couple of videos. Mm -hmm. I feel like an hour into it, yeah. it's just a little too much for exactly. a single sitting, yeah. so. It's gold. They talked about gold. Gold's the currency, and you you spend it for goods and services. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for reals though, they they talked about gold. They mentioned one thing. They understand that sometimes rarity is uh, a difficult mechanic to deal with. Yes. Like, how do you buy something that you can't find, but you want to buy it? You can't just give more money to the person because they're like, I don't know where to get that. Yeah, you can't go to the local blacksmith and be like, Cool, I need a belt of giant string. Yeah, and they're, they're like, just like, uh. 
They're gonna basically come up with a way to deal with that. Yeah. They didn't go into details. They said they're gonna do a separate blog post on it. You bet your tight little butt that we're gonna talk about that too. But for now, if you like this video and my compliment of your tokus, why don't you uh, head down to the like button and click it, and then head over to the subscribe button and click it, which is basically like milk for the channel. Then you can hit the notification bell if you wanna get notified whenever we post new content. And then when you're done with all that, come over to Twitter and ask me why the subscribe button is like milk over at CrewQT on Twitter. You can send me peach emojis uh, on Twitter at <laughs> IndigoQT, uh, or you can send us both uh, Apple emojis uh, on all of the following social medias right here. Send us Microsoft Windows emojis. <laughs> Until, penguins, uh, penguins, penguins, penguins. Penguins? Linux. Oh, okay. Until next time, bye.